can we start from the top and just maybe tell us uh, what is the motivation behind uh, building this uh, custom runtime for Lambda? Yeah, uh, so I'm happy to, happy to talk about that because there's a lot of like nuance to this. And um, as you know, as a fellow you know serverless evangelist and a, a, and a serverless enthusiast, uh, there is quite a few discussions going on about the drawbacks of serverless. And one of those discussions have mainly evolved around uh, the introduction of cold start. So when, uh, for the first time, when uh, the Lambda service loads your function code, uh, it takes a little longer time than it does when once we have that loaded into the system. And this can introduce some latency, and that's often referred to as a cold start. And it can be one of those things that it, it become a bit frustrating for um, workloads that have a very uh, strict, uh, they have strict um, uh, resource requirements or latency requirements rather, uh, which makes some workloads not applicable or less desirable. And in this world of modern applications that we live in today, users ex expect you know swift responses, where kind of every action triggers an immediate response. You don't want to have that cold starts. In reality, cold start is not really a huge problem because they represent typically between uh, less than a percent and, and around a few percent of all invocations. So in production workloads with, with a, lot of, a lot of invocations, cold start is not a, like a major problem, but still it can be disruptive to that seamless user experience that, that the customers and users are expecting. Um, so uh, I've done a lot of work, like both internally and externally, to before I joined AWS to try to mitigate these cold starts and see what we can do uh, about it. We have a lot of initiatives going uh, on at AWS to try to work around the limitations, uh, but that has currently been um, one of the drawbacks by by having a, a serverless first approach is that there has to be, you know, the, what what's what's the caveats, what's the things that you have to think about, and cold start has been one of them. Uh, at reInvent, not this reInvent, but last reInvent, we introduced something called Snapstart uh, for Java workloads that allow you, it takes kind of a different approach that allows you to store a snapshot of your application's state and memory and everything and restore that, which can be faster, uh, especially since Java applications takes a while to, to spin up. There is no such equivalent yet for uh, other types of runtimes such as Node or Python. Uh, we're working on it, but um, I wanted to take a different approach. So in the current state, we basically build runtimes for AWS Lambdas. We have a bunch of runtimes. We have Python, we have .NET, we have Java, we have Bring Your Own, uh, and we have Node.js, and et cetera. So we have a lot of uh, already provided runtimes. But these runtimes were not specifically built from the ground up to work in uh, the resource constraints that Lambda has. So they are more general purpose. And we're now taking a general purpose programming model and execution, and we're putting it into an ephemeral environment, and we're putting it into a very resource constrained environment. So that might, might come with some trade-offs. It, it works really, really well, but my uh, kind of take on this was, uh, if I start from the ground up, can I make it better? Can I make something specifically tailored for this type of environment where startup matters, but also uh, resources really matter. So make something that is very sparse on resources, that has really fast execution, that supports a dynamic language, and uh, that is like purposely built for, for this environment rather than to um, take a general purpose and, and make it adopted. So start from the ground up. And I found out also being, um, having worked with Node for more than 10 years, I, I, and of course, the popularity of, of Node ecosystem and uh, JavaScript ecosystem as a whole, uh, it's a perfect good, perfectly good candidate to start to work with. And another benefit of working with JavaScript is that it's uh, mainly a specification and it has a lot of different implementations in terms of different JavaScript engines. And the offerings that exist today uh, mainly uses browser-based JavaScript engines that have diverged from web browsers such as Safari uh, or Chrome. So you may, your audience may of course know about the, the V8 engine uh, or also the JavaScript core engine that comes from Safari and the V8 engine comes from Chrome. So those types of engines are extremely capable. 
uh, they are, have a very fast execution, but they, they require a bit of time in order to become that efficient, which is a, a characteristic not, uh, not ideal for fast startup. So they were basically built for, for web browsers. So it doesn't really matter if your web browser starts in you know, 200 milliseconds or 300 milliseconds, but it can have a huge impact uh, when running, for instance, in a Lambda function. That being said, there, there have been numerous efforts to try to improve the, the startup performance of these JavaScript engines. My approach would, was to take a, a simpler engine that was uh, written by uh, Fabrice Bellard and Shelley's Gordon. Uh, I probably butchered those, those pronunciations. Uh, fantastically skilled programmers uh, that are, you know, the minds behind FFmpeg and, and Kimu um, and many other projects that have written an engine called QuickJS. So QuickJS is an extremely lightweight, but very capable JavaScript engine. Um, so by incorporating a very, very lightweight engine that doesn't require a lot of resources, I can kind of mitigate the cold start problem and have an extremely fast startup. So taking a kind of a completely different approach to so starting from the resources that are constrained, and working from there and try to, to make it as good of an experience as possible. Yeah, I think that makes sense uh, when, you've, you know, when you're talking about the, I guess, a specialized execution environment like Lambda, yeah. uh, rather than trying to see how can we fit existing ecosystems into it, uh, I think it totally makes sense for you to ask a question, you know, go back to the foundations and see exactly. okay, what would a good JavaScript the runtime look like for this specific environment? I think, like you said, a lot of people that are starting with Lambda today are probably overthinking about cold starts because, in practice, a lot of the web traffic would be quite you know, bell curve and uh, they're quite stable. But, uh, but I have seen a few cases where you do have fairly unpredictable spike in traffic. That's where you tend to have to think about, OK, what's the impact of cold starts? And also when you have uh, you know, more complicated uh, microservices environment where APIs called APIs or cold starts can stack up. I mean, there yeah. are a few cases where cold starts is a really legitimate issue that people have to think about, especially if they're running with Java or .NET. So that's where you got things like Snapstart and provision concurrency. Uh, but JavaScript is still you know, something that uh, everyone uses. I keep watching and reading about people now switching to Rust because Rust is uh, so much faster. Um, that's great. And I think for the on the individual level, learning Rust or some other program languages is great. Uh, and you can benefit from that in your work with Lambda, but it's not feasible to say, let's just rewrite every single application yeah. that's already out there and retrain all the teams. You know, thousands and tens of thousands of engineers already are familiar with JavaScript. We can't just you know, go out and replace all of them or retrain all of them. So you know, having some way to improve the, the experience of existing JavaScript applications, I think that is uh, really, really key.